He has been an architect for these LEGO films since the beginning, building them brick by brick. Yeah, I know. I know. Please welcome producer Dan Flynn. You know, Dan, I guess really the first question is, what was it, what is it really about the LEGO cinematic universe that makes it so rich to explore? With all of our LEGO movies, we're trying to capture what's going on in your mind as you play with LEGO. So we hope that every movie we have is very distinct. People have different um, stories to tell. We all have a lot of stories to tell when we play with LEGO. So the first LEGO movie was an action-adventure movie. Lego Batman was a superhero movie, and now Lego Ninjago, we want to tackle the martial arts and giant robot movie. Again, imaginative and different. Wait, wait, what were some of the things about Ninjago that made it so rich to explore? Something that we haven't seen prior in the, in the prior two films. Yeah, with Lego Ninjago, you guys will see, you'll see a little bit in the trailer, we are incorporating natural elements uh, really for the first time. So you'll see, it's almost like Lego put in your backyard with real water, real trees, real grass. I don't want to give away too much, but we also have other real world elements that slip into the world. Like in the first one, you had the craggle. And you'll see, we've taken that to the next level with Lego Ninjago. Welcome as boy, the Green Ninja, Dave Franco! Please welcome as Garbaton, the worst guy ever, the coolest guy ever, Justin Thoreau! As Coco Lloyd's mom, Olivia Munn. As Naya the Water Ninja, Abby Jacobson. As Jay the Lightning Ninja, Kamala Johnny. He's not here today, so let's all give a big round of applause to Fred Armisen. <laughs> Getting in the mood. All right, well, you know, Dave, let's start with you. Like, what was it about the, the previous Lego movies that you really knocked your, your socks off? Um, the, uh, the humor. I mean, it's like, it's so specific where they somehow find a balance where it plays equally well to my friends who are in their 30s as it does to my nephews who are all, all under the age of five. And it's just, um, I don't know, like, that's me. Like, I'm a Lego piece now. Like, that's pretty awesome. I feel like my career is peaked. Um, Wait, where's mine? Where's yours? Mine's in Somebody, stole, Somebody it. stole it. Don't do anything weird with it. The mighty, two-inch garment. Now he's described as the worst guy ever. He's the worst guy ever. He's wearing pajamas here. Um, yeah, he's the worst guy in the world. How do you prepare to play the worst guy ever? And I'm assuming you do it before around. you drink coffee. What's that? Before you drink coffee. Oh, yeah. um, I hung around with a lot of horrible, horrible people. No, I, um, uh, I just had a, I had a blast preparing this guy. You know, I, I, so I tried to find a voice and trying to figure out what he sounded like. And, um, and then he's also just a complete and utter narcissist. Um, and I've known some of them. And, uh, and so, yeah, preparing like that. Olivia Mudd. Olivia Mudd. We say all together, ladies and gentlemen. Olivia yeah, Mudd. How did you prepare? Just me. <laughs> very strange. Wow, very strange thing just happened. Almost predatory. <laughs> Sorry, Olivia, come on. Olivia, how do you prepare to play, to bring heart and emotion and humor into these these plastic characters that have like 
been part of pop culture for so many decades. Uh, just, um, act, just act like it. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, so this, this character is really fun to play because um, she's just the most upbeat, uh, positive mom out there. That everything is just, everything is going to be great and no matter, no matter how crappy high school might feel, you're going to love it, it's going to be great. And I just basically did the opposite of everything my mom ever told me growing up. My mom was pretty tough, and I was like, oh, I'm just going to be that really upbeat, happy mom. And um, it was really fun to do, and, um, you know, foreign for me, but it was, uh, yeah, it was fun. Abby, tell us about Nye the Water Ninja. What's her, what's her special power? Um, she is, a... is the Water Ninja. Um, <laughs> And she's pretty rad. I mean, she rides a motorcycle. She's the girl in the gang. Um, yeah, she's very competitive, which is something I could relate to. And I felt like every time I reported, I found I was like finding her voice more and finding her voice among the other characters. Just such an exciting role to play. Just so outside of what I usually get to do. And yeah, I'm, I can't get off of looking at my little. No, no, no. I have we haven't it's seen the first time. Else. Yeah, I'm like very distracted by my little guy. But um, yeah, just such an awesome character to get to play. Want to hear something really cool? You get to take your home. No. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Don't do. Very excited. It's forty-seven dollars. <laughs> All right. I'll see. How much will one of you pay for this? <laughs> What's the max? How uh, three, four? Five, 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 five. Because you've got five. Everybody, you're gonna buy five. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and I think I'm now and can be the cool dad. That's a lie. He doesn't have any children. No, but it worked. It worked. I got you guys. Now, Michael, you're going to give your son your character, or you're going to keep it for yourself? No, well, actually, I, I did voiceover yesterday, and they were nice enough to give me that. And uh, he, even though he was asleep, because he falls asleep hard at 9.03 p.m. for some reason, I'm not lying. At 9.03, he was like, oh, that, that's so cool. And then he falls asleep. Uh, so, Zach, tell us about the Ice Ninja. What is, what is his secret power, other than being an Ice Ninja? Uh, Zane is a robot, and uh, he wants to be a teenager. Uh, but is ill-equipped to to assimilate to teenage culture. Um, so yeah, that's his deal. Also, now that I've seen the actual toy, I realize that he's a big Patagonia fan. He's wearing like a sweater vest and like a little LL Bean bindle. He looks like a freshman from like Houston. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was really exciting to be cast as a, a robot. Alright, you know, Dave, Dave Frank, you, know, you, you play the leader of this ninja force. So now, is there something special that you would like to introduce as an exclusive to this devoted audience here? Wouldn't it be weird if I didn't know what you were talking about? Um, <laughs> yes, I would love to introduce something. Um, let me just uh, introduce the introduction by saying that uh, we have not seen the completed film yet, but I can say for myself, like this is already my favorite project I've ever been a part of. Like, if I genuinely, I'd be so content if the only you know acting roles I get from here on out are Lego Ninjago sequels. Like. Be a happy man. So, that being said, um, we have a very new or brand new uh, world premiere trailer to show you guys. Uh, no one else has seen it, and no one else will for at least 24 hours. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's take a look at the brand new trailer for Lego Jago movie at the Alpha. Like only in Lego, only in Lego Land. But uh, I, you know, when you record voiceovers, you go in sort of one by one. But did you ever have any time, any sessions where you were all together, where you could really meet your fellow cast members? Yeah, that was one. And these guys were going on like it was like the Improv Olympics <laughs> with these guys. They were amazing. I I've never, never, heard, I've never heard Justin Thoreau's voice in person. <laughs> and my God, what a woman! <laughs> Like an FM DJ had a kid with a cello. <laughs> Just trying to beat Will Arnett's uh, GMC commercials. <laughs> his Batman and his Bojack Horseman. That's a combined voice as well. When we make these movies, it's so hard because all the actors' schedules get everyone together. So we did have one recording session with everyone. You can see kind of the camaraderie with everyone. And then we also had sessions with, with Dave and Justin as well because the father-son was a big part of the movie. That was actually something that came, when we finally got together, we did actually a lot of recording together, um, and so much came out of those recordings. Um, the, the scripts come in, obviously, very tight, very good, um, but it's only once you're sort of with the director in the booth, you know, with two people that, or three people that you can really just sort of start riffing on each other and finding new interesting themes to sort of explore. Well, what's it like when you're, when you're doing a voiceover, and you maybe you come back and you, you know, they decide something isn't working, you try something different. So like, you know, just now you're, you're all seeing footage, I'm guessing, for the first time. So like, what does that feel like? I mean, like, is it, is it exciting? Is it nerve-wracking? What do you think? It's really exciting. It's, it's a, you know, we're all such fans of it. So in a, it's, a, it's weird because, because uh, you know, you're watching it, and I feel like I'm watching it with, with the fans, and every now and then I'm like, oh, that's my voice. But for the most part, it's just, it just it feels like, I'm getting to see like this really cool exclusive with everybody else because we're, I mean, it's so piecemeal put together that you don't even, I, I don't, I mean, you know, these guys got to record together, but everything else feels so brand new. It's also, really exciting. The, the animation is stunning. I mean, really like, in, in this particular film, I mean, there's so much action in these fight scenes that were choreographed by Jackie Chan. Well, yeah, that's something we didn't know, I didn't know about until earlier. Yeah, oh. So, so uh, Dan was telling us earlier that, you know, they, they had, um, they hired Jackie Chan's actual uh, stunt guys and fight coordinators and things, and they filmed them doing these fights. 
and then the animators got a hold of the footage and then basically sort of pieced it together and uh, and sort of just did sort of shot for shot stuff, you know, basically based on the fights that they had actually done. Abby, what do you think? What we just saw? Incredible. Um, I actually recorded this morning. I actually recorded the movies of alts. Yeah. So it, that, that's something that's so exciting too. Like scenes are still being reworked and reworked and reworked, and we've been recording for a long time, like over a year. Yeah, over a year. So just to finally see it all come together, and, and I, I saw uh, little bits this morning as well. Um, it's just like mind blowing to find, like, because you, you rework scenes, you know, six months and then another six months, and then to finally see what ends up in there is so exciting. And when we all recorded together, there was so much overlap because there's like, you know, eight of us or whatever, just kind of improvising and coming up with all these things and to see it, um, Dave and I were just saying to see it all in action is, is, is really awesome. Well, what were some of, the, some of the ways in which maybe ideas that you had like made it in or at least made it into like a recording session where it'll probably end up in the film? Well, that was the exciting stuff, was when we were all in the room together, we were just improvising, like, we literally, like, they would be like, try this, and then we would all kind of play around, and then come in the next time, and it's fully animated. It's so exciting, and it's like, oh, we just said that, like, off the cuff, and that's why it was so exciting to sort of do it with a big group. I will say, very happy Fred's not here, because he's not, he's not a good person. Um, <laughs> So, uh, other than Fred being at that record session, everything was really fun. <laughs> Hashtag Fred sucks. Let's get it trending. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, Dan, I want to ask you about about how, for the first movie, uh, the directors, you know, they were doing it for the first time. How did that set the tone for these films that have now followed? Yeah, Chris and Phil, Lord and Miller directed the first movie. Uh, and they produced this movie with me. And Chris McKay, who directed Lego Batman, also produced this movie with me. So we really have a team now that's worked on all these movies. And it's all about setting like the right work environment and also casting the movies right. So there's a reason why you see all these actors on stage. Not only are they great comedic voices, but they're creators in themselves. A lot of them are writers here on stage. And so Justin's too humble to admit this, but the Malloy jokes plays really well. Justin came up with that joke. I totally take credit for that joke. 100%. There's a couple of Camille's jokes. So it's about setting the right environment for these actors to take a great script and then just elevate it and really bring those characters to life. Oh, that's great. You know, we're going to have a Q&A, so there's a microphone right up here. If you have questions, line up. Now, before we get to the Q&A, there's a cast member who would sort of like to kick things off. Can't be here today, so we have a video message from no. this Legends, icon. Let's see who it is and what the message is right now. It's not Fred Armisen. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. It's me, Jackie Chan. Sorry, I couldn't be in San Diego Comic Con today. A big hello to all the Lego Ninjago fans. I had a fantastic time on this movie. It has a big action, big laughs, and big heart. I'm very proud of the fight scene because my team and I did the choreography. Yes, those ninja moves are mine. I have a question for my posters. You already learned these special martial art moves. Are you ninja ready? Choreographed yeah. Wow. Yeah. So Fred sent in a video too, but he said the F word too many times. <laughs> so now I want to elaborate on what Justin was talking about, what Jackie was talking about, is we hired the JC stunt team. And they did all the hand-to-hand -hand martial arts work in the movie and they did wire work, and you'll see that later in some marketing materials. And then the animators watch and animated against that. So I think it's something that's never been done before in an animated movie, but it makes it all feel very real. And what's fun about it is we play with the restriction of the Lego minifig. So you can see the arms, the joints, the, and the arms don't bend. So it looks really fun seeing Jackie Chan martial arts action with Lego minifigs doing it. It's awesome. 